Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the configuring destination net with JWeb Learning Byte. All right, so what is destination net and when is it used? Uh, well, basically the idea of destination net is to translate the destination IP address and optionally the port of traffic that's coming in. And it's typically going to be in a scenario where there's hosts on the internet that need to access internal resources on your network. And so what happens here is host on the internet sends traffic to a public IP address that you own, and then that traffic is translated, or the destination address on that traffic is translated to an internal IP address of your server. And there's one type of destination NAT, which is pool-based NAT, which uses a one-to-one -one mapping using pools, and PAT is also available. All right, here is the destination NAT example. We have a user on the internet that needs to access resources on your internal server. We need to configure VSRX1 to allow access to the internal server, and we're gonna do that by configuring destination NAT and we are going to use JWeb to do that. So let's go ahead and jump to the user first and I'll show you that the user doesn't have access to that internal server. Okay, here is the user device. So let's go to open a Chrome browser and this will be what we'll be using for the IP address for the server and we can see this isn't working and it shouldn't be working and so we can now configure destination that to get it to work. So let's go ahead and close this browser and then let's go ahead and jump to the GUI. Okay, here is the GUI, uh, JWeb, and we see here that we have, uh, we're, we're currently on the dashboard and show some information like the system identification parameters, like uh, the host name, the, uh, the version of code and things like that, and resource utilization. And there's also a system alarm present, but that's just the rescue config. So that's fine if that's not set in a lab environment, production. If it were a production environment, yeah, recommend setting that. So let's go ahead over to the, if I hover over the ribbon on the left, it expands and we can see the different workspaces. And we have the monitor, which we can check out flows, NAT utilization, things like that. Configure, we can configure interfaces. Uh, we're going to configure destination that there. Reports, we can generate reports. Administration can do things like shut down the device, reboot it, whatnot. So let's go ahead and click on configure. And under here, we need to go to security, and then we need to go to NAT. And then we need to select destination. And here under destination NAT, we need to create a destination rule set. We're going to have to create a pool, and then we're going to have to create a, a rule that references that pool in the rule set. So let's go ahead and start by creating a rule set. Click the add button and then we're going to call this uh, DST LB. Capitalize LB, sure. Okay, so and then we need to specify the from parameters. We don't we don't have any routing instances other than the default configured here. So we want to actually specify zone. We could specify interface as well. This is going to be coming from the untrust zone. And then after that, we need to add a rule. Click the add button in the rule or the rules section. And under here, we're going to call this rule DST rule LB. And in here, we're going to, we need to uh, select, you know, for a destination or excuse me, a source address. We're just going to say it's going to come from anything. Actually, I need to add that on the other side. So we're just going to say four zeros slash zero, add that, that says it's going to come from anywhere. Destination address now, we're going to say, now this is going to be the interface address of the, uh, the external facing interface. So the IP address of the external facing interface. Now you could set up a pool for this as well, or not necessarily a pool, but a range of IP addresses. And then we'd have to set a proxy ARP. We're not going to do that right now. We're just going to specify the actual IP address of that external facing interface. And then under actions, we have two options, no destination NAT or do destination NAT with pool. Well, no destination NAT, you might use that for specific scenarios where you want to exempt certain IP addresses from destination NAT, but that's going to be uh, somewhat of a specific corner case to do that. And so with this, we definitely want to use the do destination NAT with pool option. And we don't have any pools configured. If I click on the drop down box, there's nothing. So let's click add new pool. Okay, so the pool name, we're just going to call this DST pool LB. And then we need to specify an address. 
We could specify a range as well, but with this, we're going to specify an address and port. And so we're going to specify the address of the actual server, which is going to be 10.5.5.100. And we're going to put a port of 80. Click OK. That creates our new pool. And then we need to select it from the drop down box. And then we can click OK here. And that adds the rule with the pool. Click OK again to create the rule set and the rule. And then we're set there. Now, one thing I do want to point out is we could have created the pool beforehand by going to the destination NAT pool tab. And we could have created the pool here. Okay, so now we just need to commit the configuration. So click the configuration button, click commit, and that's going to push it out to the SRX device. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and jump to the user again. Okay, here is the user device. Let's open up Chrome, click on the server, and perfect, we're able to reach the server. Granted, this is just shows the default Ubuntu page. It's an Ubuntu server. I didn't really configure anything special for a web page to show you guys, but this just illustrates that we do have destination at functioning properly. So let's go ahead and jump back to the JWeb GUI and have a look at a few things. All right, so here is the JWeb GUI. Let's go to the monitor section and we can go to the NAT section and select destination NAT. We can see some information here. So we have a couple hits here. I've actually done this a few times, so that's why multiple hits are showing up. But we do have six hits and so things are working there. We can look at the pools. We can see some translation hits as well in the bar graph. That's fantastic. That's what we want to see. Now, you may think that we can jump to the security flow table or the, the session table, that is, and look at things. But the thing is, with that HTTP session, that web session, it's short lived because it just basically returns a uh, just the default web page. So there's as soon as we started that session, the session ended because there was no reason to keep that session open. All right, so that brings us to the end of this learning bite. We discussed destination net, and we also talked about how to configure and also monitor destination net using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.